Good morning, sir. Sir, shall we start now, sir? Okay, we can start. It's my pleasure to start this webinar with the whole heart really welcoming you all. On behalf of RSC Engineering College, we invite you all for today's webinar on utility of n halo components in this chemistry research. It's the time to invite Mr. T. Parimala, Assistant Professor, Department of Chemistry, to deliver a welcome address. Very good morning to all. It's my pleasure to welcome you all for today's webinar on utility of n halo compounds in chemistry research. Now, I take this opportunity to welcome our principal, Dr. T. Balamurigan, for today's function. I hope heartily welcome the chief guest of the day, Dr. M. Bhutmangadan, for today's webinar. I am really welcome. Happy to welcome the Vice Principal of our institution, Dr. Kalimani Shanmugam for the functions and also I welcome the Dean of Academic, Dr. M. Rubmangadhar. I hold heartily welcome our Head of the Department of Chemistry, Dr. M. Kumareshan for today's function. Last but not least, I welcome all the learn members who ever have joined in the webinar. Thank you for the opportunity given. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am, for your spontaneous address. It's my prime duty to welcome our beloved principal, Dr. T. Balamuthgan, sir, to deliver the presidential address regarding today's webinar. The respected resource person of today's webinar, Dr. M. Rudmanandan, Professor of Chemistry Department and Dean of Academics of our college, beloved Vice Principal, uh, head of chemistry department, faculty members, other participants. A very good morning to you all. Today I am very happy to hear that the Department of Chemistry is organizing a webinar on utility of n halo compounds in chemistry research. By having our college faculty, eminent person, uh, Professor Rukmangadan as the resource person. So normally the objective of uh, organizing such type of webinar is to create awareness among the various research areas or thrust areas to be focused in chemistry. Uh, here the technology is uh, getting updated and developed day by day in order to cope up with the latest developments. Uh, developments should be done in all the fields not only in a particular field, all the supporting departments and the fields should be emerged in the simultaneous manner. Uh, then only we can get the collective output. In that series, uh, today webinar will definitely give an eye opener to the youngsters and those who are having trust in doing uh, research in the field of chemistry. So. Our uh, Dean of Academics and the Professor of Chemistry is having a vast experience in that uh, m halo compounds uh, section. So my dear participants, uh, try to have a very good interaction with our resource person so that you can gain a lot from his experience and expertise. Uh, that will give you uh, definitely an eye opening for, to proceed your research further. So with this request, my best wishes for the successful conduct of this webinar. Thank you. Thank you, sir, for your valuable address. Now I would like to invite Mr. P. Shaktivel, Assistant Professor, Department of Chemistry, to introduce our research person. Good morning to all. I am P. Shaktivel, working as Assistant Professor in Department of Chemistry. First of all, I am feeling so happy because a golden opportunity is given to me to introduce our Dean of Academics, Dr. M. Rukmagadan. Our resource person was born in a village nearer to Kumbakonam in the year 1977. He completed his schooling and secured rank in board examinations in his native villages. And the school level records done by him or yet to be broken till now. He received his bachelor degree from Kumbakonam Arts College, Government Arts College 
during the year 1997. He did his master degree in the same college during the year 1997 to 1999. In both UG and PG, he secured first class with distinction. During his PG studies, he was selected as project assistant to carry our three month summer project in radiochemistry lab IGCA or Kalpakam. He completed the project and presented his findings in the conference held in IGCR itself. He qualified CSIR net lectureship examination during the final year study of master degree. He completed his doctoral degree in Bharatiya University, Coimbatore during the year 2015. And his PhD reports were received highly commended status from all three examiners. His specialization is physical organic chemistry. He is working in our institution since 2001. He is having 21 years of teaching experience in engineering colleges and 11 years of research experience. He had the chemistry department of our college for about 20 years and coordinated first year classes and staff members for more than 10 years. He served as program officers for various clubs such as NSS, ORC, and RRC. From the inception of our institution, he is coordinating university examinations and activities and being as chief superintendent of analysis examination for about 14 semesters consecutively. He has published 20 research papers in reputed journals, presented 15 research papers in national and international conferences, and won the best paper awards for about five times. He attended more than 35 seminars, faculty development programs, workshops, etc. He is very active in research by publishing papers in journals, presenting papers in conferences, sending proposals to various funding agencies such as CSIR, DST, UGC, AICT, etc. We are all really happy this morning to have you, sir. Thank you for the opportunity given me. Thank you. Thank you, sir, for your remarkable address. May I request Dr. M. Lukmangadan, Dean of Academics, to deliver a keynote address. Kindly, sir. Good morning to all. Please, any one of you respond to me whether my voice is audible? Yeah, audible, sir. Yes, sir, it, it's audible. Okay, okay, thank you. Before going into this session, I would like to submit my heartiest thanks to our management people, founder and chairman, vice chairman, advisor, for the kind opportunity given to me. My sincere thanks to our respected principal, vice principal, HOD of chemistry department, HODs of various departments, staff members for the constant support given to me. Staff members and the students' friends from various institutions have joined into this meeting. For all these peoples, I extend my heartiest thanks and the heartiest welcome to this webinar. Are you able to see my screen? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. Thank you. <clears throat> Actually, what would be the highlights? What would be the outcomes of this today webinar? In this webinar, we are going to see about small introduction about chemistry research. Then I'm going to list out various thrust research areas of chemistry. Then our area, chemical kinetics, see a small introduction will be given, followed by the n -halo compounds, what are called n -halo compounds, how these n -halo compounds have been utilized in better manner for research in chemistry so far, then how n -halo compounds can, can be synthesized, then our synthetic compounds, one chlorobenzimidazole and one bromobenzimidazole, how these two compounds were synthesized by us, and 
what are the kinetics works have been carried out by using our compound one chlorobenzimidazole then finally the advantages of carrying about the research projects and the research works by using enhalo compounds and finally a small idea will be given for msc and the mphil and phd research scholars to choose the enhalo compounds for their research works before that i like to start the session whether doing a research work in chemistry related areas is a boon for us or curse for us some of the people may feel that doing research work in chemistry related areas is a curse what kind of people who will feel that doing the research work in chemistry related area as a curse if a research scholar is not having any proper guidance from the research supervisor if the research scholar is not having any personal involvement towards his research then he may feel that doing the research work in chemistry related areas as a curse for his life not only that one while doing the research work in chemistry related areas we have to handle the offensive odorous chemicals sometimes we have to handle the dangerous reagents of course sometimes hazardous materials may affect our health some of the reactions that are carried out in the chemistry research laboratory may be explosive in accident manner and may threat our life in addition during the research work of chemistry we have to find out the very accurate results but some of the people who are having color blindness may be unable to detect the exact color changes during the course of the reaction most of the chemicals that we are using for our research works may be of carcinogen and may produce cancer in our body for the prolonged use by considering these factors doing the research work in chemistry related areas may supposed to be of curse for some people but we are the challenging person we are very very active in doing the research work in chemistry related areas because we are having the following plus points while doing our research work in chemistry related areas we had excellent guidance from our research supervisor personally we are having the more involvement to our research work most of the chemistry people are having personal involvement towards their research work so they can enjoy on preparing the lustrous chemicals which are producing glitterous appearance on doing the chemistry research we can enjoy so many chemical reactions we can feel some pleasant odor sometimes for example during the formation of esters we can feel the fruity smell odor we know very well so we can get more happiness due to the color changes during the course of the reaction we will have an excellent opportunity to handle the state of art equipment most of the chemistry related projects will be having of social importance and hence we are doing some service to our society so with all this by considering all these factors doing research work in chemistry related areas is definitely boon for us here i have listed out only few of various research thrust areas in chemistry organic synthetic area synthesis of new organic compounds and their characterization study is the biggest area then carrying research work in phytochemistry especially flavones and some other organic compounds and studying their characteristics and studying their medicinal applications towards other direction more research work is going on photochemistry then supramolecular chemistry is another important area for carrying out the chemistry related research synthesis of medicinal drugs and their application study is another area as far as the environmental management is concerned doing research work in absorption study is another important area then study of metal complexes environmental related research works are having much more societal importance the another biggest area is green and sustainable chemistry gsc finally com coming in our area chemical kinetics so in this webinar what are the objective of conducting this webinar is to insist the msc mphil and the phd research scholars to do their research works in chemical kinetics with the help of enhalo compounds normally we chemistry people are thinking that 
chemical kinetics is nothing but the determination of order of the chemical reaction but it is not actually true of course it is the determination of order of the chemical reaction but involves it involves more than that because we are having more operational conditions and reaction conditions for carrying out any reactions so after determining the rate of the reaction we have to decide what are all the factors that are affecting the rates of the reaction whether when we are raising the concentration of the reactants what will happen to the rate of the reactions when we are raising the temperature pressure and the concentration of additional reagents what will happen to the reaction rate all those things will be investigated in chemical kinetics then after ob observing the kinetics of the data we have to formulate the reaction mechanism in which steps in how many steps the reaction is proceeded is there any intermediate formation is there any ion dipole interactions all those things will be observed in the reaction mechanism then we have to explain the reaction mechanism in detail finally with the help of observed kinetic data the more important rate law will be deduced with the help of rate law we can get much more information about the chemical kinetics of the reaction this is our n halo compounds research usually what are called the n halo compounds n halo compounds are the compounds in which the nitrogen atom is linked to halogens what are halogens we know fluorine chlorine bromine and iodine the electronegativities of all the halogens we know very well for fluorine it is very high 4 for chlorine it is 2.83 for bromine 2.73 and nitro iodine 2.05 but our parent compound is containing nitrogen atom in it here we have to compare the electronegativity of halogens and nitrogen of course the electronegativity of nitrogen is 3.07 usually electronegativities are represented by policy scale of electronegativity so the left the image that you are seeing in the left side is the parent compound. Here, the parent compound from which our inhalo compound is going to be prepared. Actually, the parent compound is containing hydrogen atom in it. We are going to replace that hydrogen atom either by chlorine or bromine by halogenation process. When you are replacing the hydrogen atom by chlorine, it is called the chlorination. When you are replacing the hydrogen atom by bromine, it is called bromination, you know. In all the cases, now n halo compounds are formed. This one is called n chloro compound, and this one is called n bromo compound. Normally, the chlorine and the bromine atoms are existing in any compound as ions. That means they are carrying the negative charges chloride ion, Cl minus, bromide ion, Br minus. But in our n halo compounds, these halogen atoms are carrying the positive charges okay positive helonium ions they are why they are getting the positive charges here here we have to compare the electronegativities of these two as i told previously the electronegativity of nitrogen is 3.03 .03. this the electronegativity of chlorine is 2.83 the electronegativity of hydrogen is greater so this nitrogen will attract the electrons present in this bond towards each side so the nitrogen will acquire the negative charge and the chlorine will acquire the positive charge so this n halo compounds will carry it will carry the positive helonium atoms in it the same is the case for n bromo compounds okay sir here we can ask what about n fluoro compounds n fluoro compounds is not at all possible because the electronegativity of fluorine is a 4, which is higher than the electronegativity of nitrogen, which is actually 3.03. So N fluoro compounds is not at all possible. Similarly, we can prepare N iodo compounds, but N iodo compounds are not preferable for kinetic study because N iodo compounds are having least water soluble in nature due to this solubility considerations. N iodo compounds are not preferable. 
so nitrogen is carrying the more electronegativity here so the halogen atom that is chlorine or bromine attached to the nitrogen will acquire the positive charge that means n helonium ions the positive charge the nature of the chlorine or bromine present in the n halo compounds will give the oxidizing property for that n halo compound so due to this reason only due to the nature of positive charge of chlorine and bromine atoms present in the n halo compounds the n halo compounds can be better utilized as the oxidizing agents for studying various oxidative reactions there are plenty of n halo compounds have been already synthesized the most important compound is n chlorosaccharin look at this diagram if h is present here that is called saccharin here hydrogen atom is replaced by chlorine so it is called n chlorosaccharin <clears throat> plenty of research works have been carried out by using this n chlorosaccharin benzyl alcohols phenyl thioacetic acids aliphatic acetals propen to all various essential amino acids alpha hydroxy acids and the four oxo acids all these substances have been studied with the help of n chlorosaccharin in all the cases the kinetical data and reaction mechanism have been studied in detail the next one is the bromo derivative of saccharin that is called n bromosaccharin this n bromosaccharin has been widely used for various oxidative reactions secondary aliphatic alcohols polymethyl carbonyl various amino acids of course and the aldoses carbohydrates have been studied by making use of this n bromosaccharin then the next one is n chlorobenzamide in all the cases i am just listing out what are the kinetics works that have been carried out by using the n halo compounds in each cases in order to give the brief idea about this in n chlorobenzamide here ascorbic acid aniline various amino acids toluidine compounds hydrazines semicarposides hydroxylamines having the group of nh2oh three benzyl propionic acid all these substances have been subjected to kinetic study by using this n chlorobenzamide the next one is the bromo derivative of the previous compound n bromobenzamide only least amount of works have been carried out by using this compound n bromobenzamide n butyl alcohols and amino acids have been studied by making use of this compound so here there is an opportunity to make use of this n bromobenzamide as the oxidizing agent to study the chemical kinetics of the remaining substance here the researchers can make use of this n bromobenzamide for their study one chlorobenzotriazole simply called cbt here look at this chlorine atom is attached to this nitrogen atom so it is n chloro compound of course or n chlorobenzotriazole or you can call one chlorobenzotriazole because the position to which the chlorine atom attached is the first position besides this nitrogen atom there is another n double bond n group due to the presence of this n double bond n group the negative nature of this nitrogen will become further enhanced so the chlorine atom attached to this nitrogen will acquire more positive charge it will be having more oxidation capacity due to that reason so many substances like mandelic acids benzyl alcohols phenylmethyl carbonyl fluorine nonyls chlorpenicols diacepam and the diphenyl carbonyl have been studied by making use of this cbt yes. n chloronicadinamide n chloronicadinamide has been widely used for studying the various amino acids it has been used as the potentiometric titrant for the more number of common reductants than ether compounds benzyl ethers then s-phenyl mercaptoacetic acid cyclohexanol chalcones and the aromatic acetals have been used by making use of this n chloronicadinamide then the bromo derivative of nicadinamide n bromo nicadinamide some compounds like alpha amino acids threonine serine and valine leucine isoleucine and phenylalanine some of the amino acids have been studied by making use of this n bromo nicadinamide 
n chlorosuccinamide and the next coming n bromosuccinamide most of the chemistry people are knowing well known that these two compounds are used as the most important oxidizing agents for almost all the organic substances alcohols diosemic carboxides anilines hydroxylamine carboxylic acids phenylacetic acids aromatic aldehydes dimethyl sulfoxides chalcones and benzene phenyl ethers so in this way for the most number of organic substances this n chlorosuccinamide has been widely used as the oxidizing agent the next coming is more and more important n bromosuccinamide n bromosuccinamide is an important oxidizing agent it can be better utilized as an oxidizing agent for variety of organic substances the next one is chloroamine by using the chloroamine oxidizing agent cysteine mefenacin amino acids salbutamol and the dimethyl sulfoxide have been subjected to detailed kinetic study the next one is bromo derivative of the previous compounds bromamine bromamine has been also used as the oxidizing agent for the variety of organic substances n bromoacetamide this is somewhat important one by making use of these compounds cyclic alcohols cyclopentanol cyclohexanols then amino acids then carbohydrates d glucose and d fructose have been studied and they have been subjected to chemical kinetics study this one is called cat chloroamine t look at this compound here the nitrogen atom present in this parent compound has been replaced by chlorine atom the variety of compounds the variety of substances have been subjected to kinetic studies and analyzed in very good manner by making use of this chloroamine t the next one is somewhat more important compound n bromothalamide if h is present if hydrogen atom is present in this area that is called thalamide here that hydrogen atom present in that thalamide is replaced by bromine it is called n bromothalamide simply known as nbpp isoleucine aspirin cyclic alcohols benzhydrals aromatic alcohols benzyl alcohols benzoin phenylethanol glycine and valine alpha hydroxy acids metronidazole and aniline these substances have been analyzed by making use of this n bromothalamide as the oxidizing agent the next coming is our compounds one chlorobenzimidazole simply known as cbi and one bromobenzimidazole simply known as bbi actually these two compounds were synthesized by our group dr b ramkumar professor of chemistry government arts college trichy who is our research supervisor actually these two compounds were synthesized from this parent compound this parent compound is called benzimidazole the hydrogen atom present in this area that is the hydrogen which is attached to the nitrogen atom is replaced either by chlorine or bromine by chlorination or bromination process how our compound cbi one chlorobenzimidazole have been prepared from the benzimidazole the simple process that is called chlorination how chlorination can be done with the help of benzimidazole for 5 gram of benzimidazole the parent compound was dissolved in 20 ml of glacial acetic acid the temperature maintained here is 32 degrees celsius now chlorination is done by passing the steam of chlorine gas into the benzimidazole solution for about half an hour the passage of chlorine gas is done on dilution with the water our product one chlorobenzimidazole has been formed the color of the product is white precipitate then it as usual it is filtered washed with water dried and recrystallization is done from ethanol for purification purpose the compound cba was once again confirmed by its melting point study actually yield of the product is about 62.5% and this is the structure of one chlorobenzimidazole the hydrogen atom which is linked to the nitrogen atom in benzimidazole has been replaced by chlorination process what are all the research works that have been carried out by us by using cbi 
CBI, one chlorobenzimidazole, was used as the oxidimetric tritent in potentiometric determination of some common reductants. For what purpose this research work has been had carried out? In order to determine the assay of the particular organic compounds, in order to determine the percentage purity of some organic compounds, the first research work has been carried out. Not only that one, after synthesizing the new compounds, one chlorobenzimidazole, we have to prove its oxidizing capacity. That oxidizing capacity of a CBI was proved by subjecting that CBI against more number of common reductants to study the oxidative reactions. Then the second one, aromatic aldehydes, especially benzaldehyde and its substituted benzaldehydes have been investigated. Then perfural. Cyclic alcohols, especially cyclobutanol, cyclobentanol, and cyclohexanol, have been subjected to the kinetic study with the help of a CBI. Then some essential amino acids, phenyl aniline, tryptophan, leucine, vanillin, and isoleucines, all these compounds have been subjected to kinetic study and the detailed mechanics, mechanistic study have been carried out by using this CBI. Then cyclic ketones, cyclohexanone, have been you have been subjected to the kinetic study. Then aromatic alcohols, that is actually my research area, benzyl alcohols and the substituted benzyl alcohols have been studied in detailed manner with the mechanistic and the kinetic, kinetic investigations. Even aliphatic alcohols, about 10 aliphatic alcohols, starting from methanol to decanol, all these aliphatic alcohols have been studied by making use of this CBI. The next one, BBA compound, one bromobenzimidazole. More and more research works have been carried out by making use of this one bromobenzimidazole by our colleague, Dr. V. Santos Kumar. <clears throat> Actually, one bromobenzimidazole was prepared from the benzimidazole, the parent compound, by bromination activity. How bromination can be done? Here, the benzimidazole compound, about 10 grams, was dissolved in aqueous NaOH of about 40 ml. Then the solution was uh, cooled to about ice cold temperature, 0 degrees Celsius. For bromination purpose, liquid bromine was added to the mixer. And the reaction mixer was stirred for about 15 minutes. Any residual bromine, if we have added any excess bromine, we have to remove it. By how it can be removed? It can be removed by washing with a sufficient amount of water. The excess bromine can be removed. Finally, the product obtained is in the solid form. It is dried over in a calcium chloride, anhydrous calcium chloride desiccator. For purification purpose, a recrystallization was done. The compound was confirmed by its melting point study. The yield is about 75%. This is the structure of BBI. Here, the hydrogen atom, which is linked to the nitrogen atom of benzimidazole, has been replaced by bromine atom. So we have synthesized the new compound, one bromobenzimidazole. We have to prove its oxidizing property. So as usual, it was used as an oxidimetic tritrant in potentiometric determination of some common reductants. Here also, it is used to determine the assay of many organic compounds. In order to find out the percentage purity of many organic compounds, our BBA was used. Then as usual, more and more kinetic study and research works have been completed with this help of BBA as an oxidizing agents, aromatic aldehydes, perfural, cyclanols, and the cyclohexanones, and even aromatic alcohols and aliphatic alcohols have been studied by making use of this BBI. <clears throat> then chemical kinetics. Hereafter, we are going to see the chemical kinetics that have been carried out with the help of our compound one chlorobenzimidazole against the more number of substrates. Usually, kinetics of any chemical reactions can be followed by three methods. What are they? Volumetry, spectrophotometry, and the potentiometry. When we are carrying out the volumetry method, there may be some difficulties. Of course, the results ended up maybe of inaccurate. We have to employ with many more reagents. We have to utilize the indicator and some other things. 
our potentiometric method has some advantages over other two methods of course spectrophotometry and the potentiometry are having much more importance they are better than volumetric study our potentiometric method has some advantages over these two the results obtained will be of more accurate and we can complete our research work with moderate expenses we need not go for spending much more amount here we are not going to employ any indicator so the detection of color changes is not needed we can get the results only by plotting the graph with the help of the observed results so there will not be any difficulty for detecting the color change the equipment that we are using is somewhat of moderate cost digital potentiometer that is actually available in all the chemistry laboratories of all the institutions with that digital potentiometer we can carry over our research works no much more additional reagents are required in the potentiometric study so kinetic study of benzyl alcohols so with the help of one chlorobenzimidazole we carried out our research work with the benzyl alcohols of course we carried out a lot of research works with the cbi one chlorobenzimidazole against more number of substances here i am going to present the kinetic study of benzyl alcohols only because while you are writing the thesis or project reports after carrying out the chemical kinetic study with the help of any nhlo compounds what are the points what are the subheadings that we are going to use on writing the thesis that the things that we are going to discuss for that purpose only i am going to use this benzyl alcohol study as an example <clears throat> what are all the materials and the chemicals that we used in our study digital potentiometer ekiptronics company has been used then the newly synthesized the compound one chlorobenzimidazole shortly known as a cbi was used as the oxidizing agent the substrate that we have chosen for example here is benzyl alcohol benzene ring with ch2oh group benzyl alcohol and its 10 substituted benzyl alcohols of course five para derivative of benzyl alcohols and five meta derivatives of benzyl alcohols that's we have chosen for this sample study what are all these five para derivatives and the five meta derivatives we can see in the next coming slides then our parent compound the benzimidazole has been used glacial acetic acid has been used as the solvent mixer then sodium triosulfate solution then one acid perchloric acid has been used and electrolyte common electrolyte sodium perchlorate has been used here then thermostat electrically operated thermostat which is having jumo contact thermometer was for our study what is the purpose of this thermometer because while we are carrying out the kinetic run there should be the maintenance of constant temperature through the run for maintaining constant temperature for maintaining the desired temperature that the thermostat have been used this is one apparatus double walled beaker in this beaker kinetic run is going to be carried out actually the reaction mixer will be taken in this double walled beaker if you are seeing this double walled beaker you can see actually it is contained two beakers one small beaker is molded in another biggest beaker the outside beaker is having two provisions for inlets and the outlets through which the hot water that is coming out from the thermostat can be circulated for what purpose the circulation of hot water coming out from the thermostat is to be done here in order to maintain the desired temperature the desired temperature may be of usually 35 degrees celsius 308 kelvin and this one is the equitronics digital potentiometer 
we know very well the potentiometer is having the accessory saturated calomel electrode and the inbuilt uh, pl platinum electrode also there the saturated calomel electrode is having the salt bridge in the inbuilt manner so there is no need of putting the salt bridge dipped in the kcl solution separately <coughs> this one is the thermostat which is having the bath in it in the bath we can put the reaction mixer vessel in order to maintain the desired temperature i have already told the substrates that we have chosen for this sample study is benzyl alcohol which is the parent compound then it's a five para derivatives para methoxy benzyl alcohol para nitro derivative para chloro benzyl alcohol para bromo benzyl alcohols para methyl benzyl alcohols then the meta derivative of all these five compounds meta methoxy benzyl alcohol meta nitro benzyl alcohol meta chloro benzyl alcohol meta bromo benzyl alcohol and the meta methyl benzyl alcohol sorry methoxy methyl benzyl alcohol yes for our kinetic run we are going to employ with many more solutions actually cbi oxidizing agent simply oxidant is going to be used then benzyl alcohol the parent compound of the substituted benzyl alcohol has been used after that the substituted benzyl alcohol 10 derivatives are there which can be carried out for them the kinetic runs can be carried out separately then perchloric acid in order to provide the acid medium for it then solvent mixer 80 percent acetic acid and the water 20 percent has been used then sodium chloride solution then temperature what are all the concentration here cbi is having the concentration 3 into 10 power minus 3 mole per decimeter cube benzyl alcohol is having 3 into 10 power minus 2 mole per decimeter cube please look here the concentration of the substrate benzyl alcohol is 10 times greater than the concentration of the oxidant cbi because we have to maintain the pseudo first order conditions while carrying out the kinetic run for that purpose the concentration of benzyl alcohol is taken much greater than the oxidant the concentration of perchloric acid is 1.5 into 10 power minus 2 mole per decimeter cube 80 percent acetic acid and 20 percent water mixer is used as a solvent the concentration of sodium chloride solution is 6 into 10 power minus 2 mole per decimeter cube the optimum temperature for carrying out the kinetic run is 308 Kelvin, of course, 35 degrees Celsius. How the kinetic run can be carried out? How we can start the normal kinetic run? Look at this diagram. In a beaker one, what we are having? The benzyl alcohol, about the 5 ml, the concentration, which I, we, I have mentioned in the previous slide. So about a 5 ml of benzyl alcohol, then 5 ml of perchloric acid, HClO4, then 5 ml of 80% acetic acid and 20% water mixer, then 5 ml of sodium chloride solutions were prepared out in a beaker 1. This beaker 1 is set aside in a thermostat in order to attain the desired temperature. In thermostat, the temperature is maintained as 35 degrees Celsius. That means 308 Kelvin. For about half an hour, this beaker is left aside for acquiring the desired temperature. In a beaker 2, separately, the oxidant CBI, one chlorobenzimeter sole, accident of a particular concentration, which I have mentioned in the previous slide, has been taken. It is also pre-equilibrated in the thermostat for about half an hour separately in order to attain the desired temperature of, in order to attain the operating temperature of 305 Kelvin, 308 Kelvin, of course, 35 degrees Celsius. After the half an hour, both the beakers, the solutions in the both the beakers are obtaining, attaining the 35 degrees Celsius temperature, desired temperature. Now, before that, the, our Equiptronics digital potentiometer has been pre-calibrated and it is 
well set for the kinetic run. The Equiptronics digital potential meter is already having, you know, the electrode assembly, saturated calamal electrode and the platinum electrode in it. Now, that platinum electrode and the saturated calamal electrode, these two electrodes are dipped in the beaker one, the reaction mixer. Please remember that the entire kinetic run should be carried out by only with the help of maintaining the constant temperature, 308 Kelvin. For that purpose only, thermostat has been used. Now, about the 5 ml of CBA solution from the beaker 2 is pipetted out and it is drained in the beaker 1, which is containing reaction mix. Now, after the addition of about 2.5 ml of oxidant, after the addition of half the amount of oxidants, the stop clock has been started. Now the reaction gets started. Now the reaction is going on. The reaction mixer is on continuous stirring with the help of magnetic stirrer, which has been provided already with the potentiometer. Now the reaction is going on. All those things I have mentioned here. Here we have to maintain the pseudo first starter conditions. That is why we are keeping the concentration of substrate, which is 10 times greater than the concentration of oxidants. Actually, the medium here is 80% acetic acid and the water medium. The operating temperature is 308 Kelvin, 35 degrees Celsius. Once the reaction is proceeded, actually, the following cell has been set up automatically. The platinum electrode with the benzimidazole, then one chlorobenzimidazole in connection with the saturated calamal electrode. This cell has been set up automatically while the reaction is proceeded. At the regular time intervals, the EMF of the cell is measured. The EMF of this, this cell is measured at the regular time intervals in terms of volts. Please remember, the reaction mixer will be of on continuous stirring to the magnetic stirrer provided with the, provided with the digital potentiometer. That is normal kinetic run. Okay, here we have seen how we can carry out the normal kinetic run. We are obtaining the kinetic results. We are obtaining the kinetic data. Here, another thing separately we have to do, product analysis and the stoichiometry. Of course, benzyl alcohol is subjected to the oxidizing with the help of CBI, one chlorobenzimidazole. Our CBI compound oxidizing agent, one chlorobenzimidazole is a mild oxidizing agent. It is a not a strong oxidizing agent. So in organic chemistry, in organic synthesis, or in organic reactions, wherever you need mild oxidation, in that places, this is a CBA compound, one chlorobenzimidazole has been used. Since it is CBA is the mild oxidizing agent, we can predict the product of oxidation of benzyl alcohol could be benzaldehyde, not benzoic acid. If the oxidant that we are employed is the strong oxidizing agent means the product could be of benzoic acid. But in our case, the oxidant employed is mild oxidizing agent. So we can predict, we can tell in advance the product would be of benzaldehyde. However, we can assume the product is benzaldehyde, but we have to confirm whether it is benzaldehyde or not. For that purpose, product analysis is done. For that, we have to carry out the separate reaction. Benzyl alcohol about 0.3 molar and oxidant of 0.9 molar. Here we have to use the more excess oxidants in order to complete the reaction for about 90% and more. So benzyl alcohol about 0.3 molar and oxidant 1 chlorobenzimidazole 0.9 molar were mixed together in the acid medium, perchloric acid. Of course, the solvent is 80% acetic acid and the water mixer. That reaction mixer was set aside for about two days for about 90% or more completion of the reaction. Finally, a product is obtained that the product is extracted with the chloroform, that the organic layer alone are washed with the water, then it is dried over. The product formed, we are expecting is benzaldehyde, that the benzaldehyde can be confirmed by some other test. 2,4-DNP derivative formation. 
2,4-dinitrophenyl hydrazone derivative formation. By making use of this, we can confirm the benzaldehyde. Or we can go for studying the IR spectrum. While we are taking the IR spectrum for the product of oxidation of benzyl alcohol, this is the spectrum that we have resulted, we are obtaining. Here there is a peak that is uh, indicating the frequency of 1700 something, which is indicating the presence of aldehyde group, that is CO group in that compound. Further, the formation of 2,4 DNP derivative confirms the presence of CHO group in that compound. The next one is the stoichiometric determination. Here in this reaction, this is the actual reaction that is involved here. One mole of benzyl alcohol consumed one mole of oxidants. This is stoichiometry of this reaction is found to be 1 is to 1. So the stoichiometry is 1 is to 1. Okay, we carried out the kinetic runs of benzyl alcohols. Of course, the 10 substituted benzyl alcohols were also subjected to kinetic study. We finished the, all the experimental works. Okay. How to interpret the results in our thesis? Under which headings we can discuss the results? That is the main thing. So for any kinetic study, we can make use of these subheadings. We have used the oxidizing agent, that is oxidant CBI. So we have to find out whether the reaction rate is depending upon the concentration of CBI or not. When we are changing, when we are altering the concentration of CBI, what will happen to the reaction rate, whether it will decrease or increase, we have to find out. Similarly, the substrate we have used is benzyl alcohol as the parent compound. When we are altering the concentration of benzyl alcohol, what will happen to the reaction rate? That study we have to discuss. The reaction is, has been carried out with the acid strength, that is H plus, which is given by HClO4 perchloric acid. Whether perchloric acid is depending upon the reaction rate or not, whether the perchloric acid has any influence on the reaction rate or not, that we have to find out. We have maintained 80% acetic acid and 20% water mixer for the kinetic run. What will happen when we are changing the polarity of the reaction mixer? When we are increasing the percentage of acetic acid, what will happen to the reaction rate? That study has to be interpreted separately. Then there are some electrolytes, NaClO4, sodium perchlorate, then chlorine scavenger, nickel chloride, radical scavenger, agrilo nitride. Then our parent compound of CBI, benzimidazole. When all these things are added to the reaction mixer separately, what will happen to the reaction rate? Whether the reaction rate remains as such or the reaction rate is getting changed. That study we have to make use separately. So the first study is order of the reaction with respect to CBI. Our accident is CBI. When we change the concentration of CBI, what will happen to the order of the reaction? That is the case. Here, this is the normal kinetic run. As I told previously, when half the amount of CBI has been added to the reaction mixer, the reaction gets started. The reaction is going on at regular time intervals. The EMF value of the cell has been noted with the help of potentiometer. Uh, these are the interpretation of the results for this case. This is the time intervals in seconds. This one is EMF value. E value can be obtained. The first reading is E naught. The EMF value obtained for different time settings is ET. The final reading is E infinity. What is the final reading? After the completion of the reaction, there will not be any change in EMF. That is taken as E infinity. So here ET minus E infinity has been calculated. The logarithmic value of each and every one has been taken. They are interpreted in the results. <clears throat> when you are plotting a graph between time in seconds in x-axis and the log of ET minus E infinity by keeping it in y-axis, we are ended up with the straight line. The straight line, the correlation coefficient of the straight line is about unity, almost unity. Since we are getting the straight line here, the reaction is a first order dependence with respect to CBI, oxidants. 
from this and from this we can get conclusion that the reaction rate is first order dependence with respect to the concentration of cbi if you are not getting any straight line here the reaction rate is not depending upon cbi we can come to a conclusion but for most of the cases the reaction rate is depending upon the concentration of cbi this is another study here also the oxidants come into play if you are seeing the table here the kinetic runs as usually has been carried out by varying the initial concentrations of the oxidants normally the oxidant concentration which we are keeping is 3 into 10 power minus 3 but here we are varying the initial concentration of oxidants and by keeping all other concentrations as constants we are not changing them the rate constants, pseudo first order rate constant K observed were obtained for each and everything. The pseudo first order rate constants remains almost constant with the varying concentration of CBI. Then the second study, our substrate, benzyl alcohol. When we are changing the concentration of substrate, benzyl alcohol, what will happen to the reaction rate? For that study, kinetic run has been carried out by varying the concentration of benzyl alcohol and the keeping the concentration of all other concentrations as constants. The pseudo first order rate constants is getting changed here. Here you can observe the rate constants, the reaction rate increases with increasing the concentration of substrates. So what would be the order of the reaction with respect to substrate concentration? For that, we have to plot a graph. Log of benzyl alcohol concentration is plotted against log of k observed. We are getting a straight line whose slope is about 0.99. Here the slope is unity. So the reaction is a first order dependence with respect to the concentration of benzyl alcohol. Suppose we are getting the slope which is lesser than unity about 0.54 or 0.56 etc. We can tell that the reaction is a fractional order dependence with respect to the concentration of benzyl alcohol. But in our case, we are getting the first order dependence with respect to benzyl alcohol concentration. Then the third effect, the effect of varying concentration of H plus ions for chloric acid. For that study, we made, actually we made this study, kinetic investigation in detailed manner. We changed the initial concentration of perchloric acid. And we kept the concentration of all other reactants as constants. Here also, this is K-absorbed value. For each and every perchloric acid strength, we have listed out the K-absorbed value. Here you can see, when the concentration of perchloric acid increases, the reaction rate also gets increases. But whether it is first order dependence or fractional dependence, we have to find out. For that purpose, we have plotted a graph. The first graph, log of H plus ion concentration in y-axis, a log of K observed. We are getting a straight line whose slope is about 0.598. Since it is lesser than unity, since it is fractional, our reaction is fractional order dependence with respect to H plus ion concentration. Suppose if you are getting the slope of about a point triple nine or some other things the reaction may be a first order dependence but in our case it is fractional order dependence with the slight extension of this effect we calculated some other parameters here c h plus means concentration of h plus ions h not mean the hamet acidity functions and all those things in order to plot the second graph called punnett wilson plot this is x-axis and this one is y-axis. For what purpose this bunnett wilson plot has been plotted? We are going to study the reaction mechanism. In the reaction mechanism, there will be definitely a rate determining slow step. We have to analyze whether the rate determining slow step will involve any participation of water molecule in it or not. For that purpose, please remember, in the rate determining slow step, whether is there any participation of water molecule in it or not, we have to find out. For that purpose, bunnett wilson plot is drawn. If the bunnett wilson plot is giving the slope value more than one, definitely there will be the participation of water molecule in the rate determining slow step of the reaction mechanism. Here also, 
the slope value is 1.30. So here we can, we can confirm that the participation of water molecule in RDS, a rate determining slow step of the reaction in the reaction mechanism. Then the fourth one, effect of solvent polarity. Solvent polarity means a dipole, dipole or ion polarity there may be there. Normally we employed 80% acetic acid and 20% water mix so for the actual kinetic run. But here for this studying this effect, we increased, we changed the percentage of acetic acid in the reaction mix. So then by putting the dielectric constant value, we are plotting a graph. Actually, the rate constant observed here is this one. If you are going through this, when the percentage of acetic acid increases, the rate constants also get increased. That means, which is again confirmed by plotting a graph, in x-axis, we are having the inverse of dielectric constant. In y-axis, we are having log k2 observed. How k2 observed can be calculated? When k observed rate constants value are divided by substrate concentration, you can end up with K2 absurd. <clears throat> Here, the graph is a, a, a straight line. So this table results that when the concentration of acetic acid increases, the rate constant value also get increased. Here, we can get one inference. That is, in the reaction mechanism, in the rate determining slow step of the reaction, there may be the interaction between ion and a neutral molecule. That means ion and a dipole molecule. Already we have confirmed that with the help of bundle tools and plots, there may be the participation of water molecule in the RDS. From this, we can confirm that another thing, that is, there may be the interaction between ion and a dipole molecule. Dipole molecule means here water molecule. So the participation of water molecule has been confirmed by these two things here. Okay, sir. If the results is in the reverse manner here, when we are raising the percentage of acetic acid, the results, rate constants are getting decreased, the opposite effect, what will happen? There may be the interaction between dipole and dipole. There will not be any participation of ionic molecule. There may be the involvement of a dipole, dipole, neutral molecules in the rate determining step, but it is not in our case. In our case, there is the interaction between ion and the dipole molecule. The dipole molecule is here water. So the ion, which we have to find out. The next one is temperature effects. The normal operating temperature for actual kinetic run is 308 Kelvin that we have chosen. Now, to study this effect, we are changing the temperature. With the help of thermostat, we have carried out the kinetic runs at four different temperatures. When the temperature is raised, the rate constants get increased, the rate of the reactions get increased. Here your graph is plotted between one by T, inverse of temperature in x-axis and the log of K to observed is kept in y-axis. The various, this is called arginous plot. From this, by slight extension, we can calculate the thermodynamic parameters, Ea, energy of activation, then delta H, delta H tagger, enthalpy of activation, then entropy of activation, free energy of activation, and finally, arginous frequency factor have been calculated. This is various effects. Sodium percolate, it is an electrolyte. A kinetic run has been carried out with the additional reagents, sodium perchlorate. When sodium perchlorate has been added, there is no change in reaction rate. Since there is no change in the reaction rate, we can come to a conclusion that the reaction is between ion and the neutral molecule in the rate remaining slow step. When NaClO4, sodium perchlorate is added and the reaction rate gets altered means which is actually not true in our case. If the re reaction rate gets altered with the addition of sodium perchlorate means there may be the possibility of dipole and dipole molecule interaction or ion and ion interaction in the rate remaining step. The next one, the effect of added chlorine scavenger. We are using the oxidant, which is one chlorobenzimidazole, CBI. Now, nickel chloride, which is a chlorine scavenger, has been added to the reaction mixer along with the normal kinetic run. The reaction rate does not get altered. From that, we can get one inference that 
Actually, CBA is an oxidizing agent. When CBA is a dissolver in the acid medium, it may be producing so many oxidizing species. CBI as such, CBI, H plus protonated CBI, that is called. Then hydrochloronium ion, H2O plus Cl, that is third oxidizing species. Then fourth one, hypoxic chloride, HOCl, and finally molecular chlorine. So there are five possible oxidizing species in the reaction mixer. Is there any involvement of molecular chlorine in the reaction mixer, in the reaction mechanism? We have to find out. When nickel chloride is added to the reaction mixer and it is subjected to the kinetic study, since the reaction rate is not getting altered, the molecular chlorine is not at all involved in the reaction mixer. So out of five oxidizing species, one of the species, that is molecular chlorine, has been ruled out. This will become clear when we discuss about the reaction mechanism. And finally, in the oxidative reactions, whether there is any polymeric formation, whether there is any free radical intermediate formation, that we have to find out. In order to detect any free radical intermediate formation in the reaction step, we have to add the agrilo nitride, which is typical radical trap. When agrilo nitride has been added to the reaction mixer, the reaction rate does not get altered. From that, we can come to a conclusion that that is, there is no free radical intermediate formation. The reaction is not getting complexed so much. <clears throat> this one is called the Exner plot. Actually, one parent compound, which is benzyl alcohol, and 10 substituted benzyl alcohols have been carried out for the kinetic study. At various different temperatures, for each and every case, we determined the observed rate constants. That means K observed. This one is the rate constants obtained at 298 Kelvin. These are the values that are the rate constants obtained at 398 Kelvin. Here, these are tabulated. Now, these two values are getting plotted. The plot is called the Exner plot. What is called the Exner plot? The Exner plot is a graph that is plotted between the rate constant values obtained at two different temperatures of the kinetic study. Since the Exner plot is almost having the straight line, having the correlation coefficients are equal to 0.998. We can come to one conclusion that all the substituted benzyl alcohols as well as the parent benzyl alcohols can follow the same unified mechanism. We need not formulate the different mechanisms for each and every benzyl alcohols. Actually, we are having 11 substrates. 11 substrates will not involve different mechanisms. They will involve only one styles mechanism that can be confirmed by the straight line plot of Exner plot. If you are not getting the straight line, there may be some different type of mechanism for each and every substrate. But here we are getting the straight line. That's why we can say that all the substrates, 11 substrates, can follow the same unified styles mechanism. The slope of the plot is 1.098. From the slope, we can calculate its isokinetic temperature, beta, by using this formula. Here, the isokinetic temperature was calculated as 207.1 Kelvin. What is called isokinetic temperature? We have used 11 substrates. They are following the chemical kinetics. For each and every case, we determine the rate constants. The rate constants may not be uniform. They will be of difference. But at a particular temperature, all the substrates all the reactions of the series will proceed with the same rate constant value, with the same speed that is called isokinetic temperature. The next one is the most famous important equation in organic chemistry is Hammett relations. Hammett relations log k is equal to log k naught plus rho sigma. Here k naught, the rate constant values obtained for the parent benzyl alcohol log k that is k here is the rate constant value obtained for the 10 substituted benzyl alcohols para and meta derivative here rho is reaction constant that we have to find out then sigma substituent constants from the literature we can get the substituent constants for each and every substrate 11 substrates we can get it so here the Hammett relation is relating the rate constant with the substituent constant. Okay, rate constant is related with substituent constants. In our research work, we are proposed to correlate the log k2 against sigma. 
for two different temperatures, 298 Kelvin and 300 Kelvin, 308 Kelvin, two different Hammett plots were drawn. This is our tabular column. This is a substituent log <coughs> K2 by KH is plotted against sigma, sigma substituent constants. These values can be obtained from the literature. This is the Hammett plot. The slope of this value that is point minus minus 0.371 that is uh, rho value reaction constant value since it is having minus value for both the cases this is the Hammett plot for 308 kelvin here we are ending with the slope of about minus 0.298 kelvin 298 kelvin in both the cases the reaction constant is having the negative sign negative sign indicates that in the rate determining slow step of the reaction there may be the possibility of the formation of an intermediate that the intermediate may have the electron deficient center carbonyl center electron deficient center means it may have the carbonyl group in it that is carbocation may be formed okay the negative values of this Hammett plot indicates that there may be the formation of carbocation intermediate in the rate determining slow step of the reaction this is how to deduce the reaction mechanism and the rate law. The reaction mechanism will engage for about uh, 10 pages at least, but I have given for about one page only. <clears throat> These are the possible various oxidizing species. Our oxidant is a CBI. When it is dissolved in any acid medium, there may be the formation of these oxidizing species. We have to find out which species out of these five oxidizing species, which species is going to be involved in our reaction mechanism. So we have to rule out one by one. When we are adding the nickel chloride to our reaction mixer and the kinetic run has been carried out, the reaction rate is not getting altered. From that, we can rule out the molecular chlorine may be the oxidizing species. Okay, Molecular chlorine may not be the oxidizing species that can be ruled out. When nickel chloride is added and if the reaction rate is altered means there may be the possibility of the participation of molecular chlorine as the oxidation species. But in our case, the addition of nickel chloride is not having any effect. So molecular chlorine can be ruled out. It can be disappeared. It is not considered. The second one. Benzimidazole, the parent compound of the oxidants, when it is added to the reaction mixer normally and the kinetic run is carried out. The reaction rate is not retarded. If the reaction rate is retarded means there is the pre-equilibrium step in the first step. In the reaction mechanism, there is the first step should be pre-equilibrium step between CBI and the BI. Please remember, if the reaction rate is retarded with the addition of benzimidazole means there is the pre-equilibrium step in the reaction mechanism as the first step. But in our case, the addition of benzimidazole does not influence the reaction rate. So the possibility of H2OCl and HOCl has been ruled out. The remaining two things, CBI and CBIH+. Out of these two, which one is the oxidizing species? That we have to finalize. But in our third effect study, effect of H plus ion, effect of the reaction rate on H plus ion per chloric acid, we ended up with the result of fractional order dependence. When the reaction rate is fractional order dependence with respect to the H plus ion means there is the participation of CBA H plus in the reaction mechanism. If the reaction is not depending upon the reaction rate of, if the reaction rate is not depending upon the H plus ion, this can be ruled out. CBA H plus can be ruled out then CBA will come into play. But in our case, truly, the reaction rate is depending upon the H plus ions strength. It is having the fractional order dependence. So this can be ruled out. Free CBA cannot exist. CBA H plus will be the oxidizing species for our reaction mechanism. And this is the actual reaction steps. This is an reaction, a benzyl alcohol and one chlorobenzimidazole. This is parent substitute, parent substrate. This is oxidant. This is the product of benzaldehyde. Look at the reaction steps mechanism. In the first step, 
CBI is getting protonated because it is dissolved in acidic water. So it is getting protonated to give CBI H plus. Protonated CBI is the oxidizing species. That protonated CBI is reacting with our parent compound substrate, benzyl alcohol, along with the water. Okay. So there is the interaction between CBI H plus ion and the dipole in this ion and the neutral molecules in the slow step of the reaction. So in the slow step of the reaction mechanism, there is the interaction between ion and the dipole, which we have confirmed with the help of acetic acid study as well as under bunnett olsen plot. Here, what is the intermediate? The intermediate is having the carbonyl group, okay, benzyl chloride. The intermediate is having the carbonyl group. It is called the carbocation. So electron deficient center it is having. So the presence of electron deficient center, the formation of electron deficient center in the reaction intermediate has been already confirmed by the negative values of the Hammett plots. In the fast step, this intermediate gets decomposed to produce benzaldehyde as the final product. When you are taking out the unnecessary things, we can end up with this reaction. The rate law that is, has been deduced after careful derivations, which is involving for about four or five pages, we ended up with the rate law. From the rate law, we can tell the effects of various substrate oxidants on the reaction rate. We have already told that the reaction rate is first order dependence with respect to CBI, of course, because it is present in the numerator. The reaction rate is first order dependence with respect to our substrate, benzyl alcohol, because it is present in the numerator, first order dependence. We have already told that the reaction rate is fractional order dependence with respect to H plus ion, that means H3O plus ions, because here also in rate law, H3 plus, H3O plus, that means H plus is present in both the numerator and the denominator, that means fractional order dependence. This point we have already mentioned, the negative row value of the Hammett plot indicated that the electron deficiency center, that means the considerable carbonyl character in the reaction uh, transition stage. Generally, this is the order of reactivity. We have chosen 10 substituted benzyl alcohols and one benzyl alcohol parent compound. So we have employed with 11 substrates. What is the order of reactivity of these compounds that we have given? From this, we can come to a conclusion that the electron donating groups accelerate the reaction rate and the electron withdrawing group retards the reaction rate. Okay, here some will be electron donating groups and some will be electron withdrawing groups. So when the electron donating groups are attached to the benzene ring, the reaction rate get increased. The presence of electron withdrawing groups retarded the reaction rate. So this is while you are writing the thesis, we have to give the conclusion, or in project report, we have, we have to give the conclusion. We have to give the conclusion part for well, which observations have, we have made. The enhalo compound, one chlorobenzimeter sol, has been utilized for the oxidation study of aromatic alcohols. Ten substituted benzyl alcohol we have studied in such a way that we can give your conclusion part. The product will be of aldehyde, we have already shown. The stoichiometry of the reaction is 1.1. Then various effects. The order of the reaction with respect to oxidant and the substrate is unity. The order of the reaction with respect to H plus ionic strength is a fractional. bunnett olsen plot we have drawn. From that plot, we can confirm the participation of water molecule in the rate determining slow step of the reaction. Then when we raise the, the percentage of acetic acid, the reaction rate also gets increased. Then various thermodynamic parameters have been calculated then suitable mechanism has been uh, arrived at and we deduced the rate law in consistent with the observed kinetic results. What are all the advantages of doing research? As far as concerned, the MSc or MPhil or PhD students, what are all the advantages of doing research in chemical kinetics? We can complete our research works with moderate expenditure. Enhalo compounds, already there are so many enhalo compounds, but we can newly synthesize more and more enhalo compounds. The only one condition is the parent compound must contain nitrogen atom in it. Either by trial and error method, we can go for chlorination or bromination of it to prepare to synthesize a new enhalo compounds. So variety of enhalo compounds can be synthesized hereafter also. 
After synthesizing any inhalo compounds, we can confirm its oxidizing capacity by kinetic study. Plenty of substrates are available in the chemistry history. By making use of these substrates, we can make them to react. We can go for observing the kinetic data. We can deduce the reaction mechanism. We can derive the rate law in such a way that. By simply extending this idea, various analytical techniques such as assay of compounds uh, and the determining the percentage purity of some footsteps and even some chemical compounds can be determined. And this is a small idea from me for <clears throat> MSc study. If you are MSc student, you can frame your projects like this. This is only while you are considering the NHLO compounds for your research work. For that only I am giving idea. You can go for synthesizing the new NHLO compounds and you can study its characteristics that may form the superb MSc thesis. Or there are some already existing NHLO compounds. With the existing NHLO compounds, you can go for uh, studying the kinetics of your particular oxidative reactions and studying its various effects in such a way that you can frame your research work. Or with the already existing NHLO compounds, you can go for verifying its oxidizing capacity whether it is a mild oxidizing agent or it is a strong oxidizing agent, you can go for verifying it by carrying out potentiometric determination against some common reductants. Plenty of common reductants are available such as glucose, fructose, and all doses, etc. With those common reductants, you can go for carrying your such work. This is a simple area for MSc. For MPhil products works, you can go for synthesizing the new NHLO compounds and you can study their characteristics with the help of IR spectrum and some other things, NMR spectrum. Then detail the kinetic and mechanic study you can carry out. Only one set of compounds can be taken. One parent compound can be taken. Kinetic study may be, go for, may be proceed on it. And various effects and the deriving its mechanism and all those things you can do for it. And finally, PhD research works. For that, we have to definitely synthesize the new NHLO compounds. We have to study its characterization. We have to prove whether it is a mild oxidizing agent or it is a strong oxidizing agent. We have to prove it. Then we have to include the kinetic and the mechanical study of any parent compound and it's at least 10 substituent compounds. Okay, uh, What we have presented in this webinar. Okay, We have to synthesize the new NHLO compound. We can go for proving its oxidizing capacity. We have to go for studying its kinetic study in detailed manner. For that, you can choose one parent compound and it's a 10 substituent compounds you can choose. Then we have to frame, we have to uh, derive its reaction mechanism. We have to formulate by which steps, in how many steps the reaction is procedured. And we have to arrive, finally, we have to derive the rate law inconsistent with the observed kinetic data. In such a way that we can go for framing your PhD research works while only one condition, while you are proceeding the research work in a new NHLO compounds. If you are interested in the NHLO compounds, you can frame your PhD research work in, in this manner. So with this, I am winding up for my webinar. Hope that it may be of somewhat useful to you. If you have any queries, you need not hesitate here. Participants, anything else? If you have any queries, feel free to ask our resource person. Dear participants, if you have any queries, you need not hesitate to clarify it. While you are proceeding your research works with the help of NHLO compounds, if you are having any doubts time to time, you can contact me over my mail ID or my, through my WhatsApp number. <clears throat> Thank you, sir, for your wonderful attainment in the field of chemistry. Now, I would like to welcome Mr. A. Sriram, Assistant Professor, Department of Electronics and Communication Engineering, to propose a vote of thanks. Thank you, ma'am, for the given opportunity. And a very big thank you to the keynote speaker of this webinar. He is none other than Dr. M. Rukman Nadan, Dean of Academic, Aristo Engineering College, for his effort towards today's webinar topic on utility of n-halo component in chemistry research. 
Thank you, sir. I must mention a deep sense of appreciation for Research Committee and Department of Chemistry, RS Engineering College for, RS, for arranging this wonderful webinar. Next, wholeheartedly, I must thank our principal, vice principal, authorities of various departments and staff members of various departments for their support and guidance for organizing such an event. And not but not least, I congratulate all the participants for their active participation. Thank you, everyone, once again, for making this webinar a great success. Thank you, sir. Here, the feedback link is given in the chat box. Uh, please, you know, make make it use of make use of it. Dear participants, the feedback link is given in the chat box. Please make use of it. Thank you. Thank you, one and all.